Next into the den is Dubliner Robbie Ward. I have literally traveled the world with this business. I've been in five continents. I've put some serious air miles in. I've had sleepless nights. I'm ready now to scale this up to, uh, to international proportions. But can he make it yet another investment by pulling in a deal with the Dragons? Hello, my name is Robbie Ward, founder and CEO of Drink Command Limited. We are seeking an investment of £200,000 for 10% equity. Drink Command have created a self-serve draft beer system that we sell to bars, stadiums, festivals and drink companies. We've all been at an event where we've had to queue for a long time to buy a drink. But with our system, customers experience pulling their own pints, avoiding the queues and enjoying fresh, cold drinks at their own pace. Here's how it works. A customer will purchase credit at the venue onto a key fob or festival wristband or stadium season ticket card or a mobile app. They will then use any of the venue's self-pour taps to choose a beer, while our system keeps track of exactly how much has been poured and how much customer credit is remaining. Outlets with drink command systems installed typically see a quick return on investment while creating something unique in the venue that drives repeat business. Now we have sales so far of 370,000 into five continents. And we have a strong sales pipeline here in the UK with purchase intent from well-known brands including Yo Sushi, Glastonbury, and uh, some top tier football and rugby stadiums. The Dragons, thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your questions. Uh, but first, I have some key fobs and would like to ask you to try pouring your own beers. I'm up. I've pulled a few pints in my life. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> there you go. That's one for you. A device that allows beer drinkers to beat the queues is the offering from Robbie Ward. Now, just let it settle. It will settle, settle into a perfect point. He's seeking £200,000 in exchange for a 10% share in his self-pour pump business. OK. It's so slow. <laughs> Can we go for a tea break? Right. <laughs> I think I think that's pretty much I think that's pretty much settled there. But the long wait for a perfect pint has left Deborah Meaden feeling a little flat. Did that go how you expected it to go? The particular beer that we're pouring today is uh, is maybe one of the more challenging beers. I've got to say that wasn't the fastest and the best pour that I've seen. We live and die by the quality of the pour, OK? Um, and um, we've, got, you know, we've got to almost three million individual pours. If our systems poured bad beer, there's no way we would have got past 3,000. How many actual machines of these have you got out and about? We've had, we've had 75 individual sales. Uh, so right now, we're holding an order from um, Bristol Sport, who are redeveloping the Bristol City and Bristol uh, Rugby Stadium. And self pour is, is built into that stadium from the start. We've done a trial with uh, uh, Man United in Old Trafford, um, and, uh, and they loved it. Um, but we're expecting to go into possibly four stadiums this year, um, you, know, as a, you know, as an initial, initial burst. The market in half-time refreshments for sports fans could offer an investor a winning return. Sarah Willingham, a major player in the food and drink industry, wants to find out more about Robbie's cashless payment system. Why did you go down the FOB route? Why did you not put a credit card machine in them? You can't put cash into the machine because then it's a vending machine and beer vending machines are not, not legal. I, I really don't like the principle of the credit because I think it's a, it's a way of the bars making money from people. Look, this, you know, our company, this system is not about stealing money from customers, OK? This is a tool to allow bars to be more efficient, OK? So I go on, I, I go on with my fob and I'm, I've got £1.50 credit, which I can't buy a beer for. Can I go back and get a refund? If the operator has, um, uh, has set it up so that you can get refunds, then absolutely, yes, you can and do And if that. he hasn't, yes. then what happens? Uh, well, then you can top up 
uh, you know, with the, with the balance. Oh, I see. But let's assume I'm there for one night. Yes. I'm not going to go back there. It's, right. it's, it's a fair point, but you can see how much customer credit has been loaded onto all of our systems worldwide, and we can see how that has been used. And in fact, what we find is that, that they might only go back six months later. To that, to that bar thinking, well, actually, I still have credit and uh, I'm going to uh, go back and see that. And we actually do see that happening on a daily basis. I don't like when consumers' cash sits on a business's balance sheet and at some point they move it into their cash because the consumers never claimed it. I just think there's something fundamentally wrong with that for the consumer. So I wish you all the best with it. Um, but I'm afraid it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. A setback for Robbie, as the dragon with form in this industry declines the deal. And further trouble could be brewing, as Peter Jones warms to one of his favourite themes. Robbie. Yes. You've come in with a valuation here of £2 million. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that you said you've had £370,000 worth of sales. That's correct. What's the profit been? Um, our profit has been 19000 net profit uh, so far. There's, um, there's a couple of other things I need to tell you now, right? So, yeah, um, please, because this will be good, because you've got a business that made £19,000 that you're valuing at £2 million. Firstly, we have our first international distribution agreement in place uh, for, uh, for Australia. There's a $50,000 license fee and a minimum of $1.8 million worth of sales over three years. So what do you make out of that contract? Our profit margin on that $1.8 million is 55%. You know, we have been entrepreneurial and sold this system in concept stage to... to You've you know, sold to 75 that are making... units. While, while we have travelled the world, world selling those 75 units, we have uncovered some incredible opportunities along the way. What, have you found gold? We have, we have uh, f first of all, it's our sales pipeline. We have some... No, 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 that's a pipeline. That's, that's not... Let's live in the now, today. What's worth two million today? <laughs> uh, the, um, Look, you know, the... I think... Uh, you know, yeah, okay, you know, to look at today, we, you know, we need to look at today's sales and what we have, uh, you know, what we have at the yeah. moment, all right? Yeah. So, so right now we've got six sales um, that we're, uh, you know, that we're literally installing as we speak, okay? Um, you know, we have, we have, you know, strong letters Robbie, of Robbie, is the answer, I can't justify two million, because you're floundering. Is it not true to say, do you know what? It, I don't think it is worth two million, but I thought I'd wing it. No, I, I don't feel like I'm winging it. Robbie, I'm going to tell Based you where I customer. am. I think you know where I am. I congratulate you on creating a product that, and a business. But it's not investable at anything like the money and the value that you're suggesting it is worth today. So for that reason, I'm out. Robbie loses his second dragon as Peter Jones fails to buy into his £2 million company valuation. And Tuka Suleiman has also made up his mind. I don't go to pubs. I believe that, yes, you may have a business for this at events, but I think you will struggle to put them into local pubs and to reduce the amount of staff. So for that reason, I am out. Can I ask what, what, the, uh, what the funds are going to be used for? Um, you know, in a nutshell, market development, when our potential customers see it, they genuinely do love it, and it's, it's a real kind of a hands-on product. We need to get it out there in front of it. You could do this without my investment, can you? I think, I think without the money, we'd be fine. But you know what, we've, we, we have, Nick, we've worked way too hard, you know, and put too much into this so far to be just fine, okay? This business, uh, you know, we have an opportunity now to cement ourselves as the global leader. Right, I, I, I'll tell you, where I am, I struggle to see how, if there's a, if there's the right demand for it, that you really need the money to make this uh, to make this happen. Um, so I'm afraid I can't invest. I'm out. Nick Jenkins has walked away from the deal, unconvinced that Robbie really needs his cash. With only Deborah Meaden yet to show her hand, Robbie is drinking at the Last Chance Saloon. 
Robbie, I, I don't share the problem with the fob, to be perfectly honest, uh, because the operator can recognise that as an issue and say, there's your change. Exactly. Put the key back in, there's your change. So I, I like all of that. I like the sports market. I think you're, I think you're going to make a go of this. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to do well. But I think the single biggest issue does get down to valuation. I think the offer that I would have to make you to, at a value that I thought it was worth, you're not going to do. And I'm not going to waste your time and my time doing that. Sure. So um, I won't be investing. I'm sorry, Robbie. But I'm, I'm out. OK. We're done. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. So it's no deal, and Robbie must leave the den empty-handed. But at least this mild-mannered entrepreneur's failure to secure an investment doesn't appear to have left him bitter. I thought at one point, from the way Deborah was talking, it was heading towards an offer. The valuation killed us. Perhaps we should have gone in at a lower valuation, but we will go on to do great things and blow that valuation out of the water.